In this lecture, we're going to take a look at the normal input of a material, which is used to define a type of texture known as a normal map. In the world of 3D modeling, normal maps are a memory efficient way to add small details to a 3D object. They allow you to define things like small bumps, cracks, crevices, and ridges in a way that is much more cost effective than the regular way of defining things in 3D space. This is achieved through a lighting trick, where you can set a rotation for each individual pixel of the surface of the object, and the shading of that pixel will be based on that rotation. All right, so to fully understand what this means, you first need to understand what is meant by the term normal. In geometry, a normal refers to the vector, or direction, that is perpendicular to the surface of an object at any given point. So, for example, if we have this flat surface here, then the normal at any point is this vector coming straight up here. And then if we have a curved surface, such as this one, there are different normals at different points. But again, each one is simply the vector perpendicular to the surface at that point. Okay, so usually, when a material is applied to a surface, each pixel of the material will have the same normal as the pixel of the surface that it is applied to. Another way of putting this is that the pixels of the material are perfectly parallel with the pixels of the surface. But by using a normal map, you can change the normal of each pixel of the material relative to the surface, which will change how light reflects off of that pixel. Okay, so as an example, imagine that I have this 4 pixel by 4 pixel image open in an image editing program such as Photoshop. And let's say that I'm using this image as the normal map for a 4 by 4 pixel material. So a normal map works like this. For each pixel of the normal map, the three values that make up the color of that pixel are used to define a vector value, which specifies the direction that that pixel's normal should face. The amount of red in the pixel determines the X rotation of the vector, the amount of green determines the Y rotation of the vector, and the amount of blue determines the Z rotation. I'll show you the exact math in a moment, but for now, just know that a color value of 0 0.5, 0 0.51, which corresponds to 128, 128, 255 in most 2D image programs, is equal to the vector exactly perpendicular to the surface. Or in other words, it is the same vector that is used by default as the normal. And that's why you will see this light purple color predominantly used in the type of normal maps that Unreal uses, because it corresponds to the default normal, or the areas of the material where there should be no change. So then imagine that I make the entire image this color. By doing so, when I import this image in as a texture and connect it to the normal input of my material, it won't have any effect on the material because all the normals will still point in the same direction. Okay, so as a crude example, imagine that we are zoomed in on a 4x4 pixel material that has been applied to a 4x4 pixel surface of an object. The surface of the object is perfectly flat, so the pixels on the material lay perfectly flat. However, if we apply a normal map to this material, we can change that. So let's imagine that I now connect the normal map we just looked at, which is entirely that light purple color, to this material. Again, this won't have any effect, because it is defining the normals to point in the same direction they already were, and so all the pixels of the material remain aligned with the pixels of the surface. But what happens if we change the color of one of the pixels of the normal map? For example, let's say I created a color that is similar to the light purple color, but with slightly more red in it. And then let's say that I set this pixel here to that color. So now, because I increase the amount of red in the pixel, the normal for that pixel should rotate in the positive x direction. So using my crude model as an example, that pixel will now look something like this. Or if I had decreased the amount of red in the pixel, the normal for that pixel would rotate in the negative x direction like so. Or if I had increased the amount of green instead, the pixel would be rotated in the positive y direction, like so. Or if I had changed the amount of blue, it would change the rotation in the z direction. 
Okay, and then if I were to change the red, green, and blue values, then the pixel would be rotated in all three directions. All right, so by rotating a series of pixels in a certain way, you can create certain texturing effects. So for example, you might create a bump like so, or a crevice, or a ridge. All right, so it's not necessary to memorize the following, as I'll explain shortly, but if you're curious, the math for converting between color and vector in Unreal Engine works like this. To convert from a color to a vector, multiply by 2, then subtract 1. To convert from a vector to a color, divide by 2, then add 0 0.5. So let's say the color is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1. 0 0.5 times 2 is 1, and then subtracting 1 from that gives you 0. So the first two numbers of the color, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, get converted to a 0. And then 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1, so the 1 remains a 1. So the converted vector is 0, 0, 1, which is the default normal vector. So this is why the light purple color results in the default normal. Okay, and then the color values in most image programs go from 0 to 255 instead of 0 to 1. So to convert between these two color types, you either divide by 255 or multiply by 255. Okay, so now let's take a look at an example of using a normal map in Unreal Engine. So I'm going to create a new material, name it My Normal Material, and then open it. And for the preview mesh, I'm going to use the cube. And then I'm going to create a vector three node, give it a random color, and then connect it to the base color pen. So now I have a material that currently looks like this. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the textures folder and the starter content. That's the starter content, not the course content and drag this T brick clay new end texture into the graph. And I'm going to use this texture as my normal map for this material. So I'm going to connect it to the normal input. And now you can see in the preview of the material that this mesh appears to have a lot of three dimensional detail in it, even though it's actually just a flat surface. So by using a normal map, this mesh now has the appearance of a lot of detail, but will still have the performance of a simple flat cube. All right, so how do you go about creating normal maps? One way is to create them manually, like I just demonstrated a moment ago in a 2D image program such as Photoshop, and just paint the colors yourself. So this can work for very simple normal maps, but for normal maps with any kind of complexity, you will want to have them auto-generated from software. So for example, let's say you created this carved bone axe in a 3D modeling program, such as 3ds Max. You created all the fine details the same way you did the larger details, so this 3D model contains lots and lots of tiny polygons to create all the different cracks and crevices. Luckily, there is a way to have the software automatically generate a much simpler form of this mesh along with a normal map that can be applied to it to give you the same result. So it might generate a simpler form of the mesh that looks like this. So you would import this mesh and the normal map image into Unreal Engine. And then you could create a new material, connect the normal map to the normal input, and then when you apply the material to the mesh, it would end up looking like this. All right, and that will conclude the lecture on normal maps.